Hi guys, it's Anna from Voting Kelly Science, and I'm here to tell you guys about your nine must-haves for your middle school science classroom. So really, these are just the top nine things that I use every year, all the time, and I wanted to share them with you guys um, too and show you how I use them. activities for the day in and you can reuse them all day. You simply just need a dry erase marker and students can play their games and mark up on here and erase and play again. So this has saved on color copies. Um, there's a lot of things in science that just really pop with color um, or if we're playing Jenga games to have the color here and instead of making a set of colored copies 120 times I can just make a class set or even half a class set if we're playing in partners and use it all day. And then I can store it away and use it year after year. So it really saves on copies and it protects my things. Um, and this is the SmartPal version. I've learned that these are a lot sturdier and last longer. Um, the, the plastic on here is really thick and so it lasts longer than some other uh, dry erase protective sleeves. So I showed you my number one. That was the only one that I'm going to um, be showing you in order. So the rest are just the rest of the list. To go along with those protective sleeves that we play partner games in a lot, you are going to need these colorful dice. Ooh, that's hard to show. <laughs> uh, but these colorful dice, uh, I feel that I use them a lot and it's, they're fun and colorful. Who wouldn't want to have them around? So it's always good to have a whole bunch because you play different games, you like to keep them interested, and sometimes you use different amounts just to keep them interested. I have never had students get tired of using dice. Every time I get them out, they are excited and ready to play. The next item I want to show you took me a few years to finally buckle down and purchase, but once I did, I was so happy that I had them on hand, and that is clipboards. And you can get them really cheap, a dollar a piece, just these cheapo clipboards. Why? Mostly in science, because you look like a scientist, because scientists use clipboards and they collect data. But we use them all the time because I try to keep them up and moving, so I might have activities hanging on the wall. And in the hallways, this is just a lot easier for them to write on. I will even have kids ask to get them out on days that I don't necessarily have planned to use them, just because it adds a level of engagement or professionalism and really helps them think like scientists. So I would really highly recommend having a class set of these um, to use with your students because they really enjoy them. The next thing on my list, you might start thinking, I don't need that. Why do I need that? The school usually has one for me to use. And I thought the exact same thing until Kalisa showed me the ways. So this one is thanks to Kalisa. When I started, joined her team on science, she said, go buy a personal laminator. And I was, and still so thankful that I purchased this three years ago. It's 20 bucks, one of the best 20 bucks that I have spent. Um, it's convenient. You can, if you have something you need to just laminate real quick, that maybe you need it for your next class, or uh, you forgot to laminate something, that never happens, right? <laughs> uh, you forget to do something for the lesson for the day. So these are really nice. And the other thing that I really like besides the convenience is it's really sturdy. So when you buy one of these, you're also gonna want a pack of laminator sheets and they're like little pockets. You just slip your paper in and run it through the laminator and you will find, and you're gonna get hooked and you're not gonna to wanna to use your school laminator as much that it's so sturdy. It's really thicker um, than a big laminator machine um, and you're able to use it a lot more often. This can be in lots of partner groups. Uh, this game has been printed, laminated in here for three years now and it still is very sturdy. 
So that is a really good plus. I would really highly suggest getting yourself a lamination machine. We don't always use it when we have big projects, we'll use a school laminator, but this is just nice to have when you have things you want to be really sturdy. Keeping up with this same piece of lamination sheet, you might have noticed a spinner on here. This is another item that is on my must have list. These are just little spinner arrows that you can purchase. They come in a huge pack, I got 120. And all you have to do is uh, punch a hole in here and snap it on and you have a fun interactive spinner. I know um, a quick way to use is a pencil and a paper clip and we do that a lot too. But having this just really protects the sheets a little more than having all the pencil marks digging a hole through here. And you don't have to hear about our group can't find our paper clip. We lost our paper clip. And so this is just here ready to go. And I have found that it's a lot more convenient than hunting and searching for paper clips all the time. I will purchase the 120 spinners and have them ready to go. Next up on my list is something wild. Cups. Can you believe it? Cups. So this is just one fraction of the cups that I have. I purchased them at the dollar store they, in sets of three for a dollar. So if your dollar store still carries these, this is a good purchase. I use them for so many different things. On these, you can see that this is labeled table four. I have uh, one cup for each table. I have it labeled. I put all the little things in there, dice when we're playing games, uh, dry erase markers, any of the little things they're gonna need, I label them and put them. So when it's time to clean up at the end of the day, I can quickly see, oh, table four, you're missing a dry erase marker, look around on the floor, and we know which table is missing what. So I just did this this year when I labeled them by table and it has been a lifesaver for all of my tiny pieces. Another thing, we use them for organization and, and stacking and vocabulary. You can see here, this one has cell taped on it and tissue. So when we learn about levels of organizations, we do stacking. There's just so many things, uh, liquids for labs. I use these so often. This was one of the best purchases. And I would suggest finding some nice cheap plastic cups. You will always be ready and organized. The next item is something again that Kalisa showed me. So Kalisa again changed my classroom and that is these trays. So these are bigger trays. They're pretty big. They're bigger than um, cafeteria trays that you sometimes purchase. And they have a nice big ledge, which makes it really easy for putting uh, materials for activities or labs for the day. They're all organized on here. The students just come up and carry it back to their table and we, they have everything they need. You also may see that I have numbers on here. These are labeled by tables as well. Again, uh, when it's time to clean it up, I can simply quickly see, oh, table two, you're missing your spring scale. Look around for it, bring it up here. And then I know which table, instead of telling the whole class that some table is missing some material, I know which table is missing what. This has, again, really saved my science materials. I don't have things missing as often. I have things returned in really good condition because I'm able to see which table treated items how. So this has been a lifesaver as well. And this is a great purchase. So if you have been around Bowdoin Kelly Science for a while, following us on Instagram or Facebook, you will oftentimes see pictures of these trays all lined up on my counter, set up with labs for the day and I just can't, the colorfulness, I just have to take a picture and share it. So to go along with these, if we're ever doing an activity that needs cards for sorting or other items, I have these little card holders that I, of course, color match to the tray, and I don't have my red tray here, but uh, this, these would go on a red tray to color match because why not? And these have kept my cards intact and in order so well. I used to have to have kids sort through the cards, see what's missing, and we'd be yelling across the room, who has two of these, who has, because they would get all mixed matched. For some reason, these cute little containers, the kids open up the containers, they keep it all organized, they keep it just with their partner, and I don't have that 
mixing of the cards and them getting lost on the floor. I don't know what it is about these plastic containers, maybe because it's so they're they're so pretty, but the kids really take a lot better care of cards in here um, than if I just give them in an envelope or a paper clipped. This has saved all of my card sorts and other activities we do with cards. And the final thing, the number nine item that I suggest might be just as exciting as the cups, <laughs> but that is colored pencils. I have found it just so much easier to have these ready for the kids. Um, I have, of course, table numbers and little bins in my room with packs of colored pencils and it's just easier um, so the kids who don't have colored pencils or they've lost them by the by September, um, it's just easier to have them so I don't have to deal with people asking for them or digging them out. I usually buy 20 packs of these every year when they're really cheap at Target or Walmart. You can usually get them for about 90 cents and that is when I load up on these and I have them available. We do a lot of guided notes. We do a lot of color coding. We like to color in things in our notes. So are you seeing a theme here? Colorful. This is just easy to have on hand so I don't have to worry about people being embar embarrassed to ask. I don't have to worry about people ha not having them for the day. I always have lots of colored pencils around. So stock up on these in August or July now when they put stuff out so you have them ready. That is my list. Hopefully you found it helpful and if there are other items that you can think of, put a comment below and other people will be able to read it. Also, if you use any of these items in a different way, share that as well because we are always here to learn and grow. So that is great to know other ways we can use these items. If you want to learn more techniques from us at Bone and Kelly Science, make sure you subscribe to our channel so you are first to know when we have a new video. Finally, I have linked all of the items that I talked about below so you can check out those items and see if they are a good fit for your classroom. Let us know how it goes and thanks for watching. Bye!